All right, guys, we're back. We got the engine here today, and I'm gonna be trying to take some stuff off of this starters. I'm gonna take the fuel pump off, just to a uh, 10 millimeter bolts on there. Looks like a nut. Yeah, next one, other two bolts, not nuts. And uh, same two will hold on the uh, coils. There's one up top, one down low. However, uh, the coils are also wired in this plug that goes into the engine for the uh, ignition system. And it's behind the flywheel, which I don't want to take off quite yet. So I might leave these on a little longer, but this can come off. I'm going to uh, pull all the covers. So this top cover can come off, side covers here. Don't know what exactly can come off quite yet because I know this cover here is going to need to come off. And I think these can come off without this coming off, with the clutch coming off, I mean. But the flywheel might have to come off to get to this cover, obviously, and that cover might be holding some of these on, so I have to see what's going on with that. But, all right, I'll get that started and I'll show you the process. just quit on me in the middle of the time lapse just stopped doing it but I got all the covers off unfortunately you may have seen this cover that was on this side is in pieces those pieces right there it's just totally rusted through not a good situation I gotta get this all vacuumed up before I can do anything so let me get all this dirt out of the way all right I got everything cleaned up and the motor uh, rotated around I'm gonna start trying to take uh, some of this stuff off. I don't know if I'm going to take the flywheel off altogether yet, but we'll start working on that. I'll be getting the recoil mount off. So guys, I looked into what I had in the way of uh, big sockets. I didn't think I had one that would quite fit, especially in metric. But I found this uh, inch and a quarter socket here. It does fit on here. It's supposed to be metric, but it does fit. And guess what? I was able to actually break it loose with the uh, breaker bar. Not the engine, obviously, the nut. <laughs> so I can uh, start pulling this off. Now, uh, ooh, it's already, yeah, there we go. So, yeah. Now this isn't obviously gonna come right off. It's gonna need a puller to get, try to get this off. I got some pullers around, so. Well, as you can see here, I have the right tool to take the uh, flywheel off. It's got four bolts that go into the holes here and you just tighten that up and it pulls the uh, flywheel right off. So underneath is the uh, coils and the stator assembly. It's got points here and here you can see. Now these look pretty clean. The uh, screws here are slotted so I gotta make sure I mark them accordingly. I'm gonna take this piece, this cover here off next, and you know, then I can start looking at taking this off and taking this cylinder heads off. All right, so here's a close-up view of what we're dealing with. I couldn't get this off, and the reason for that is there's an alignment pin here and here. So there we go. And those get a little stuck sometimes, so just very, very carefully tapping with the Dead blow a rubber mallet will let you get this off. I got all the bolts out and everything. Cause I first I thought this cover here had to come off. And I was like, no, it doesn't, because it's not connected to the mounting brackets. So now I can set this to the side with the uh, flywheel and get a better look in here. This all needs to get brushed out, so I'm gonna do that real quick. As I was saying, this I need to do some markings on this plate here and here to show where the alignment is because this will affect the timing if I don't put it quite right. But uh, don't technically have to do that quite yet. I can make attempts to remove the heads before that. So I think that is gonna be the, uh, the way to go here is I'm gonna try to take the heads off now. I'm very nervous about this because I don't want to break head bolts off. 
that's gonna be quite the job to get out. And hopefully they come off okay. They might not want to come off too easy. So yeah, a little nervous. I mean, this KTM engine, it's right now the flywheel stuck on it because it's all the threads are screwed up in there. But uh, the head, I still haven't gotten off the cylinder on this. That stuck pretty good. So hopefully it's not gonna be the case with this. I'm somewhat hopeful because these aren't super rusty from being underneath the cover. The outer ones are a little rusty, but still they don't look terrible. I'll just make sure to spray them with a bunch of penetrating oil and I'm gonna go for it. So wish me luck. I hope everything comes out good with this. So I have these here laid out in the way that they were originally fitted in. This was been the uh, clutch side and this was mag side cylinder, cylinder one, cylinder two. And I have them still lined up the way the engine was sitting in there. And this is the cover here, one and two, and the carburetors, one and two. So I also tried to note which one the uh, special nut was. Originally I thought that was a head bolt that went through the cover. It's this special nut here that is threaded in both sides that is used for that though, so you don't actually have to take the head bolt out to take the cover off. So I might look at taking the covers apart on my other 72. I think that has a mouse nest in next to the uh, engine shroud. But anyway, let's see what these look like on the other side. Well, that's quite a bit of carbon buildup, but it doesn't look like too damaged, I don't think. And this is about the same, except maybe a little bit better. And obviously you can see the Made in Japan here. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. This is the uh, Fuji engine made in Japan for Polaris. That's what these old ones were. Motor tag on this is pretty slick, but yeah, it was 294cc Fuji engine. Well, as you saw, I removed the heads from the engine. I put some oil in them just now and this already the oil's come out. So this cylinder is probably gonna come off. This one might be more of a job to get off, but there is oil coming out the exhaust port, so some oil must be getting around the rings. Now, as you can clearly see on here, this piston got a little burnt. Must have been running a little lean. That's really not too good. This one, it's okay. Obviously a lot of carbon buildup, but the cylinder looks pretty nice too here. It's nice and smooth, but yeah, that burn isn't the greatest. I have to replace this piston. I don't know, probably run best probably if it had a new one now i'm thinking the next thing to do is going to be remove the cylinders probably start with this one because this one's most likely the one to come off and then this one give it a try it's obviously not gonna doesn't seem like it's gonna come off quite as easy since there's still a lot of oil in there although it is leaking out the exhaust port, so there must be some stuff getting through the rings so it's leading me to think maybe it's the bearings that are seized up rather than the uh cylinders like i was initially thinking you know you can see in here all the rust in the intake ports so not quite sure for sh certain you can also see a bit of corrosion on these uh posts here just the ones that stuck on the outside because these ones were under the cover so it's nice that that cover really protected them it came off a lot easier than i initially thought it would As you guys saw in that time lapse, I was trying to remove the cylinder and it was stuck on there pretty good. So I stopped the video and it took me quite a while with my help of my dad and we were able to get the, uh, the cylinder off. We ended up taking a piece of wood and had to chisel the corners on it a little bit. And uh, this is piston is burnt and it's pretty done for anyway. We were just, we tapped on the piston and pulled up on the cylinder. So I have the, uh, the cylinder here. You can see it's got a little bit of rust in the uh, in there, but it should clean out. I hope. I want it down a little bit and see what I can do. But I don't know if you can see this on camera. 
Yep, the engine is slightly turning. This is the piston that was really stuck, and I can get that to turn about this much. So my hopes are that this crankshaft isn't actually gonna be too bad in there. And I'm not gonna have to uh, deal with that because these crankshafts are pressed together with the bearing in the center, and I think on either side, I believe is the way they were. And you'd have to have the whole uh, crankshaft pulled apart to get to the center bearing and uh, everything would have to be precision put exactly the way it was before where time or everything's gonna be off with this. So hopefully that's not the uh, issue. I'm gonna keep putting oil in this cylinder and uh, keep trying to turn the engine so I can get this uh, piston to be all the way down. If this piston's all the way down, it's gonna be so much easier to get this cylinder off, I think. But just got the four bolts here, their job to get off because the bolt right on this back corner is really difficult to uh, get on with a wrench. You can only get with the uh, one inside, you can't get the box. The box doesn't fit in there. It's better than the other one because I can fit the wrench on. The other one, it was hard to even get the wrench on this corner. It's the pain in the butt one. But yeah, so, so far, so actually not too bad. It's open. So yeah, this uh, one, uh, rod came loose and everything I was very excited because it made me think the crankshaft wasn't going to be too bad. There is a lot of dirt and rust in here so it's probably I might have to take the bottom end apart and everything and clean it out but hopefully the bearings are good in here and I can just clean it up and it'll come out good. So I'm going to try to start working on getting this cylinder off I guess. So I got you guys off the tripod again and a bunch of work has been done on this. You can see the second cylinder was removed. It came off a lot easier because the piston wasn't totally stuck in it. That rotates nice there. It also took the, uh, there's uh, snap rings in the, for the wrist pins. I took those out with a pair of snap ring pliers. This, much more stiff. That's not very good. So I think there might still be some issues with the crankshaft, unfortunately. You can look at the edge of the piston and see that's all pitted and damaged. So this piston obviously got a little burnt too, or something in the cylinder. This still only turned about that much. And uh, so I turned my attention to the stator plate. So if I take the crankcase off for a part, that's gonna need to get taken off. And I was able to get these screws loose. Of course, I marked uh, right here. Yeah, my phone doesn't want to focus up close, but there's a little line right there that I scratched in there to mark where this is so it can mount back in place correctly. I took some good pictures. This screw was fun. So the way you take these off as per the manual, which I, of course, moved away from the page that I need. This should be page like 19, I believe. Give me just a second. page 20 it shows that you need an impact screwdriver and it shows there basically it's just a screwdriver where you if you do motorcycles you're probably familiar with it we had one round so we ended up using that of course this one didn't stripped out for the phillips head so i cut a slot with a uh, grinding wheel and then it came out with that so i gotta remove these two screws and then this should, in theory, come off. I mean, we could do that probably real quick right now. Now, before I pull this off, now that I got the two screws out, I'm going to have to remove all these terminals here. So I took a whole bunch of pictures on how this goes together. I put a piece of blue tape on this one since there's two yellow wires. And then it's pretty obvious where all the other ones go with pictures. You got two reddish pink ones that go there into the middle bottom. You got this yellow one that goes in the bottom on this side, yellow on the top, brown here, and the two white ones go in the top middle. So I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it matters if you mix these yellow ones up, but it might, so I don't know for sure. That's why I put a piece of tape around just to make sure I get exactly the same way as before. So I'm gonna pull these terminals out of here. Now I did it with this one already, but the way you do it there's a little tab at the top, you push that tab and you can pull the terminal out. So I'm gonna do that off camera with all these 
and then I'll get this pulled off and show it to you on the other side and everything. Before that, let me show you the uh, cylinder real quick that came off of uh, this piston. All right, so here's our cylinder, a little dirty. Obviously it doesn't look terrible in there. I think on this side, you can obviously see a bit of corrosion. And you can kind of see where it's been. And that's actually not a mark in there. That's just a piece of a rag that broke off that line-like thing you see in there. Wipe it off, see now it's gone from my finger. So hoping that probably could just get honed out, to be honest, real quick, or just cleaned up a little bit. And it'll be all good, I'd, I assume. I mean, both cylinders don't look terrible. The pistons obviously are gonna need to be replaced. And I don't know what's going on with the crankshafts, so I'm gonna get back to that now. Well, there's our uh, stator plate here. See, I got all the pins out, and the grommet came loose, so I could pull it out, pull it through easy. Now, here's what's underneath. Four more screws. I hate dealing with the flip screws, but this is in order to, next thing that has to be done, we have to remove the crank end seal, which is right here. These four screws. So uh, I guess that's gonna be the next uh, venture to go on. Hopefully these come out easier than the one screw for the stator plate. Anyway, we'll get on that. millimeter So using some pry tools, I was able to remove this here. You can see the bottom balls of the bearing in there are quite rusty all around them. So that's probably one of the main reasons it's stuck right now. So here's the seal. You can see that rust again there. And I also got the clutch off. You can see a mouse nest inside the clutch. Now this was quite a job because I didn't have quite the right tool exactly for that. And uh, tool I ended up using is basically you're supposed to have a bolt here like this this would have been used for doing this originally and then you'd have a either a second piece to go in there or a piece connected to a bolt for the puller so we just cut this uh, piece of steel rod down and use the air ratchet you probably saw before I tried to use a breaker bar it didn't really work on this end now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to try to uh, get these nuts off here. They have a little clip here that needs to get bent out the way, I believe. Now, you also may have noticed I took the pistons off, and that's be basically with that, you have a wrist pin puller, which is this piece here. You put this through, screw this onto the other end, just reverse the red, and then tighten it up and it'll pull it out. So I got those lined up where they're supposed to go. The bearings didn't look to be in too bad a shape or anything in here. I'll show you those maybe later, but, uh, yeah, so the next steps are take these off, take the bottom piece off, and then I can split the case, hopefully by taking all the case bolts out. So start getting on that. Now that the end has been taken apart here, you can see the gasket broke, obviously, and there's more rust in there and all around the bottom bearing. This one's really rusted up along there, which is showing why it's seized. These are the bolts in there. They have a little tab that holds them on. I smashed one of my fingers because this turns out it to be uh, 12 millimeter, not 13. So I was using the wrong size and I slipped off it was a little too big so now that I have this off I'm basically ready to split the case once I get these bolts all out in the bottom and before I can do that I have to take this bottom piece off so I'll get that off quick
guys. <clears throat> so here's what we're dealing with. Let me get a pair of gloves before I start touching stuff. But as you can see, I got the uh, case split here. Now this was quite a job. I don't know how much of the time lapse I'm gonna include, but it did take me a really long time to uh, get it to come apart because there's an alignment pin, as you can see right here. And that was rusted in, in place. And it was really hard to get it out. I hate dealing with those alignment pins. There's a lot of stuff on the Polaris Colts that will use those. The brake system uses it. And the uh, other cover on the side of the motor I mentioned before had it. Now, here we have our crankshaft. And I don't know if you can see from this distance, but there's absolute sludge in the bottom of the engine. Mud, literally. But I played around. I sprayed oil and tried to move some stuff. I got both uh, piston rods rotating really well. And this end bearing here, I got to free up totally. Now we still got this bearing stuck and uh, the center bearings are stuck, but I'm hoping to play around with them, see what I can do. If I can get them to free up, I gotta get this whole thing cleaned out. The whole bottom end I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna do this off camera because I don't think it's worth showing here. But yeah, I see, I don't know if you can see here, there's a little piece here and this fits into a groove that holds the thing in place. And you can see the whole thing is rotating, but you can see the bearings are spinning free and this one's locking in place because that's what it's supposed to do. But once I get it to actually lock there, nothing moves. Except you can get these to rotate fine. So I guess I'll try to clean this all up so my hands don't look like this every time I touch it. I mean, those are brand new gloves and the gloves I had on before look like that too. Yeah, it'd be nice to get these bearings to free up. If not, I can probably spend a hundred bucks on a crankshaft. But it'd be nice to keep the original crankshaft in here and not have to buy that. Especially with a bearing that was totally locked up, freeing up after just a little bit of playing with it. The only problem is you can't get to the balls on these two bearings. because There's two center bearings here. And you can get to these ones at least, but not these, so it's gonna be a little harder to deal with those. But anyway, I'll just, I'll see what happens. Hopefully I get lucky and I can uh, get stuff to come free. Well guys, you're not gonna believe it. Check this out. As you can see, none of the bearings are spinning in there in place. Every single bearing is spinning the way it should without the entire bearing rotating in the bottom end. So that took actually quite a while to do. Right now I have uh, uh, some, I put some penetrating grease on there just to make, try to clean them up a little bit. As you can obviously hear, they're growling a little bit, which isn't the greatest. I'll see if I can keep working on them, trying to clean them up. Um, but. Yeah, so basically what I did is I just took some of the liquid wrench, I have only a little bit left in here, and then some new thing is that 45 and kept spraying that into the bearings. You can get on, on either side of these bearings. There's two bearings here, two bearings here, and one bearing here. And then you got the bearings in the bottom of the connecting rods. So those were obviously, as I showed before, the connecting rods were the first thing I was able to get to free up. Then this one freed right up. But this one with the... Uh, uh, thing around it. I don't remember what that piece is called like a retaining clip kind of thing that locks in on the groove the bottom end here That one was the hardest one to get freed up, but there is holes in the, these pieces here for the connecting rods and You can actually stick the straw through those and spray into the back of the bearing and That was able to get these to clean up good. So yeah, I'm gonna keep playing with them See if I can get the growl less. I still might end up having to buy a new crankshaft But yeah, very exciting that I have this rotating well guys, this video is getting a little long, so I figure I'm going to end off here and then put part two as the rebuild. So anyway, we're going to pick back up next time in the next video uh, with the engine being put back together. I'm doing this video after the fact because right now I have the whole engine rebuilt. So the video is basically, I just have to finish editing and then I'll have that out soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this uh, engine tear down and uh, the rebuild will be in the next part. Alright, see you guys later.